Hey guys, um, I'm gonna make a video today um, with something that God's really been speaking to me about and doing in my life. Not the easiest, like happiest, greatest video, but in the end, um, it, it is for our good. It is for the better. Um, so I'm excited to share with you guys what um, has been going on. Um, and we're going to go in the Word a little to back up everything, of course. So yeah, so God's been really dealing with things in me in this over the past like month or so, month and a half. With things in my life that are really, really not supposed to be there inside of me. Just things that are not of Him. And, you know, a lot of the times when we come to God, none of us are perfect. So, we come to God and then we're not just overnight in a split second this perfect being. We have to strive every single day to be more like Jesus. And a lot of the times um, when we were in the world and we come out of the world, there's things that God needs to deal with in our hearts, deal with in our souls. That's been there for so long and we don't recognize it because we're just so used to it. But um, in this little chunk of time, God is really um, just helping me grow very, very quickly. Um, and it's it can be painful. It's like when um, a child or a teenager is going through um, puberty and they're growing quickly and they have growth pains. It's, it's, sometimes it can just be painful when you're growing. And I noticed that God, a lot of the times when he's dealing with these things, they're inside of our soul. Um, just from the world and from sin and all this stuff, it's gotten into our soul so deep we don't even know it's there. And God's like, I have to get this out of you because if you want me to use you and do things with you um, where I'm freely flowing through you, we have to get this out of you because God can't join with darkness. He can't join with sin. So anything that's in us that needs to come out, he has to start to work on that. Um, but there's a couple, there's two things that he really wants me to share and I'm going to go in my Bible. But the first, the first thing is correction. So that is what he is really, um, seems to be focusing on with me <laughs> the last couple of weeks, correcting me constantly. And it's not because God likes to point his finger. It's not because, blah, blah, blah. I mean, really, technically, he's God. So actually, he can point his finger. He can do whatever he wants because he's God. <laughs> um, but it's really because he wants us to grow. He wants us to get closer to him. And the way that I look at it is like God's all the way up here. You know, and we start all the way at the ground. And we get a little bit of sin out of our life we get a little closer to him and then we get a little bit more out you know there's things that in this world that are like blatantly and obviously sin you know fornication and getting drunk and uh i don't know all these things those are obvious things that the bible says are wrong right but once we get those things down and we have those and we're saying and we're good we're not doing that anymore there's other things that god still needs to deal with that we might not even notice we're doing um so i found the couple scriptures but this this first one that i found says whoever loves instruction loves knowledge but he who hates correction is stupid <laughs> um and something a huge thing that God was showing me is that I hated hated to be corrected and I hated to be wrong 
and something that God is working on is that, and that is a huge, huge problem for me, which is just really not good. So something that he needs to teach us and to help us with, because we're humans, we don't like to be humble, is to be humble and to be sorry and say, you know what, whether it's to a person or to God, humble ourselves and genuinely say, you know what, I'm so sorry and that's wrong of me and I'm gonna change my ways. I'm not perfect and it is really uncomfortable when all these things start to come up that you're like, oh, you know, it's it could be really easy to get down on yourself and say, oh my gosh, I'm doing all these things wrong. This is horrible, I feel awful. You might feel awful because all this stuff's getting pulled up out of your soul and it's coming to the surface and when it's on the surface and you have to deal with it it's gonna feel probably pretty ugly um but god says to love correction and the reason that he's saying that is because he knows that it's gonna help us grow he knows that it's just gonna help us get closer to him um now i found one more this is a really good one he says now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present so no discipline seems to be joyful in the present but painful nevertheless afterward it yields peace able to able fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it yeah 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 this is the best verse ever when it comes to discipline correction so god's saying in the present he he says right here it's not going to be joyful. Joyful. It's actually going to be painful. And if God says it, it's true. So don't get down on yourself. We're human. We are not perfect. And we are wrong. We, No one wants to take accountability and responsibility for the things that they are doing. You know? But we have to. And we have to humble ourselves. I'm realizing that humbling yourself is actually one of the most amazing peaceful and beautiful things you can ever do for yourself it's it's an unbelievable feeling when you become humble um so he says it's not joyful it's gonna be painful but he says afterwards you have peace and righteousness to those who have been trained by it so we have to allow god to train us to be more like him we have to stop fighting when we're wrong and something i'm realizing is that when we when we humble ourselves and go before the lord and we're just 100 percent like god i messed up i don't know how to fix this i hate this about myself take it from me this peace comes over you because when you really surrender it instead of just sitting in it and saying oh my gosh this is horrible and you know what i am really hard on myself i am very hard on myself <laughs> but and that's okay i think sometimes to be hard on yourself because we need to change um but yeah so that's that's one of the things that god's really been showing me is humility and to how, how it's actually a really beautiful thing um, when you humble yourselves before God. And when you're dealing with people, you need to learn to be humble. Because I'm realizing that when you're humble, it means a lot to people. A lot. Because most people in this world are not humble. So when someone sees someone who is, most of the time people are like what's different about this person why is this person so quick to take responsibility for what they did so it, it really is something that just re helps us to represent christ because the world's not not doing it um but yeah and one other thing, they're kind of, sort of, not really this, the same thing. But, so, I want to talk about giving to the poor. <sighs> Man, so, when I first, when I was in the world, and when I got out of the world, 
you know, I didn't know if it was right to give to the poor. I was like, what are they going to do with it? Or, you know, all these normal thoughts that come into a person's head with giving to the poor. But one day the Lord said to me, I said, God, what what if they use the money to go do something bad or or whatever? And God said to me, Hannah, it's not of your concern what they do with it, but you must be obedient to me. And I found some scriptures on giving to the poor. Now, this is one I found that I thought was really good. There's a lot of them, but he says, he who gives to the poor will not lack, but he who hides his eyes will have many curses. When I read that, oh my goodness. Now, this was the first verse I read, I think, about giving to the poor. I was in, and this was when I was in that stage of, do I, do I not? I'm not sure what to do with this. This was the first verse that God brought me to when he, when I, when he said, You'll, you'll be cursed if you don't give to the poor. Oh my goodness, you better believe that I got on that really quickly. You guys, it doesn't have to be this like crazy amount or keep dollar bills in your car and every time you see, give them a dollar bill, you know? And one thing that I do feel like God wants me to share is tithing and giving to the poor are two different things. The Bible talks about tithing. You have to give 10% to God. Give it to your local church. That is God's and no one else's. So you tithing is separate. Now, what you do with your extra money after you tithe, that's up to you. But I would recommend giving some to the poor because the Bible says here, he who hides his eyes will have many curses. And I don't think that we want to, I don't think that we want that to happen. And it says that you'll lack, you won't lack. So it's a very important thing to do. God does not want us to forget about the poor because they're still his children and they need his help. Now, let's see here. Oh, this is another thing. This is separate from giving to the poor. I am all over the place today, but this is good stuff. Going back, rewind to living in humility. Now, the word says, this is what the word says. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. So that was huge when I read that. When God was bringing, he's still bringing me through it. I'm still learning um, how to do right, how to, and the little things, you guys, like, just little tiny things that we're very selfish with and we don't think about other people. We love to put ourselves first. And God's really pulling that out of me right now. And it's really, it's hard. But I know that it's going to be worth it. But when he was um, teaching me this, um, he brought me to this verse that says, If it's possible, as much as depends on you, live in peace with all men. So that really, oh, look how cute. Um, that was huge for me. When I saw that, I was like, and you have to be really humble to do that. Like we cannot do that by ourselves. We can, it's impossible to live at peace with all men without God. That's a very humbling thing to do. Um, but it's really helped me. And I've even talked to people recently that I, you know, did have problems with, or, um, we weren't seeing eye to eye or things weren't right. And just through communication and doing what God says, taking that faith, um, of trying and doing your best to live at peace with them, God did show up and he did some amazing things, um, in those situations that I had with people. So 
I guess the gist is that when we're on our walk with God, it's not always just the obvious sin. Sometimes, you know, it's these things in our heart that keep us from getting closer to Him. And it does something to people when we say, I'm so sorry, I was wrong. When we take accountability and responsibility and sometimes, like, not, not sometimes, usually it sucks. Like, what you did, no one ever wants to say, I did that. You know, we all want to be great humans. We all want to be awesome. <laughs> we don't want to do wrong, but we do because we're imperfect. But there's something really special about apologizing and saying you're sorry when, you, when you're wrong. And God really honors that. God really honors us taking accountability. That's what he wants his children to do um, because we are imperfect, you know? So those are my two things, just humbling yourself, taking accountability, and giving to the poor. Those are the two things that he wanted me to talk about. Um, but yeah, so... I love you guys, and if anyone has any questions, you can always comment or message, whatever you want to do. I'm more than happy to to uh, reach out and answer the best that I can. Mwah.